Well, this is Radio TV Phono Nut, and I thought we'd do a part two on this Silver Tone wireless record player. I think we'll just jump on in this and construct the little FET preamp circuit, like what I used in the little kitty record player a few videos ago, and try to make this thing perform a little better. Just in case you didn't watch the last video, I'll bring you up to speed here. This is a silver tone wireless record player that contains a built-in AM transmitter for transmitting the audio from the record to a nearby AM radio. Uh, one of the things I had to do to it was replace the original pickup cartridge, which was a 3-volt crystal cartridge. Yes, I could have sent the old cartridge in and had it rebuilt for 60 bucks, but I don't, I don't like that idea. Newer type cartridges are so much cheaper and sound better and track lighter, and they last longer, and they're less damaging to records, but the drawback is they don't have as much output. I installed an 89T school record player cartridge in here, or actually one that the LP side of the cartridge was bad, but the 78 side still has a tip on it. And I had to install a counterbalance spring to get the tracking pressure down. And it works, but the 1.3 volt output is just a little bit too weak. When, this, when you consider this thing originally had a 3 volt output cartridge in it. And I've got all my parts together that I need to build the circuit and here's the diagram here for more information on how to build this circuit look back on my past two or three videos there's a video where I built one of these little circuits for a little single tube kitty record player okay we have our circuit constructed kinda crude but effective and before I go any further, I misspoke in the first video. Uh, here's our screen grid, pin 5 of the 35L6, and you see it's connected to R3. I mistakenly said that was a grid bias resistor. I'm sure some of you were about to jump through your computer screen when I said that. Actually, this is a screen grid dropping resistor. If you look here, the other end of the resistor is connected to the B plus line, so this resistor R3 just drops the B plus voltage down to the correct level for the screen grid. And if you look, our audio from the cartridge comes into the this potentiometer here, which is your modulation level control. The center of the potentiometer connects to one end of capacitor C7, and then the other end of that capacitor connects to your screen grid, so they are they are modulating the screen grid with the audio from the record and C7 is just a DC blocking capacitor to keep the uh, high voltage off of the uh, potentiometer there. So what we're going to do to add our preamp stage, we're going to break the connection between C7 and R3 and we'll connect the output of the preamp to the end of C7 that's now loose, and then the output, the center terminal of the volume of the modulation control, will connect to the input of the preamp. Okay, we have the preamp in circuit. For right now, I'm using my bench power supply with the record player plugged into the isolation transformer since this is a hot chassis job. Now let's see what we have here. It's a lot louder than it was. You gotta get your lover Sunday, then you get Here's another our modulation Monday. level. That's too much. What you're supposed to do is adjust the level on the phonograph for the cleanest sound coming out of the radio.
Okay, we're about 40 or 50 feet away from the shop, and we're still getting reception. I had to crank the I had to crank the modulation up all the way, but yeah, this thing's got a pretty decent range on it with just a little four-foot piece of wire antenna. Okay, now we have to figure out how we're going to power this because obviously I can't take the power supply everywhere I go with the phonograph. So what we need is between 9 and 14 volts. And we look on our schematic here, we have R4 coming off of the cathode of the rectifier, which is a 1,000 ohm, 1 watt flex resistor. And that goes to our first filter capacitor and then our other resistor that's in our Pi filter network, R1, is a 10,000 ohms. Well, obviously there's going to be still too much voltage there, so I'm thinking come off of the second filter capacitor with a huge resistor, which I'll determine with our resistance box. I'll just start at 10 mega ohm and work our way down until we come up with the suitable value and, and we might have to drop a Zener diode in there to keep the voltage better regulated but we'll just see okay we're all back together I used a 100k ohm resistor to drop the B plus voltage down to a suitable level for the preamp I also shunted the input of the preamp with a .0033 microfarad capacitor because it was still a little bit too hot on some records and, and the capacitor also cut some of the high end which with most 78's there's a lot of background hiss and other objectionable noises from years of abuse and neglect so that kind of cuts back on some of that alright let's see what it sounds like See our modulation control here obviously varies our volume. If we turn it too high, it's Distortion City. That's, that's wide open and you can tell it's distorted. Now if the radio was a fairly deep, far piece away from the transmitter, you'd need to turn this control up a little higher. As far as mounting that preamp, I just zip tied it in place. Didn't really want to do it that way, but that was my really my only option at this particular time. But it works and it gets the job done. And like I've said in other videos, if if we're going to properly get these old units in operation again, we're going to all have to learn how to do stuff like this in order to do it. Because in this case, they don't make 3-volt crystal cartridges anymore. And I could have the old one rebuilt, but that's about 50 or 60 bucks, and it might not last very long. Here's an old record from the teens or 20s. Okay, well that ought to about do it for this video. Hopefully we'll have something else again soon. Hope you got something out of all this.